Hey Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark and today we're checking out some more Reddit stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, and maybe that cheeky notification bell too. And let's crack on with today's first story. Much love guys. Now, today's first story comes from West Dragonfly 7526 and says, am I the asshole here? For telling my sister, I told you so, after she announced to the family her husband divorcing her. So I, 21 female, have a sister named Lisa, 27 female. My sister has, in my eyes, an unhealthy obsession to make everything in her house fit her aesthetic. So no colorful colors, except different shades of brown and gray and white. She throws away anything that does not fit into her aesthetic including her daughter's Maya two female toys and husband Mark 29 male clothes. <laughs> I, I've told my sister several times she needs to stop this before she does something to push Mark over the edge. She told me to shut up because she knows her man so well. Lisa has a history of throwing away gifts, gift bag included if it's not in her style. What pushed Mark to finally stand up and leave Lisa was when his elderly mother, whose hobby is knitting, gifted both Mark and Maya colorful sweaters she knitted herself that took a long time to make. Lisa did not like this, so behind Mark's back, she threw them away. When Mark learned about this, he told her he was done and demanded a divorce. Lisa called my parents to tell them the news, and I said I told you so on the call. She cussed me out and then hung up. My mum said I could be more sympathetic and my dad agreed with her. So Reddit, am I the arsehole here? Edit, okay, let me address a few things here since there are too many comments. One, my parents aren't bad people. They don't play favourites and they don't like Lisa's aesthetic lifestyle. They only lend the shoulder to cry on because she's getting divorced and Mark kicked her out. Two, Lisa is now living here since Mark has kicked her out now. Three, Lisa's behaviour started when she joined college. Or when we asked her to seek therapy or help because of her behavior, she screams she's not mental and calls us stupid, gives us the cold shoulder. Five, she only allows grays, browns, or select shades of white and black. Edit two, for those asking, no, Lisa can't get the sweaters back. She threw them into a random dumpster, and when she went back for them, they were already gone. And no, I don't think Mark's mum can make another one. It took her over a year to knit two of them. She's already in her late 60s, has arthritis, and used expensive yarn. We'll update if something happens. And we have an update in a moment. Now look, I don't blame the husband for feeling the way he does about this. He sounds like, he, like you said, he was on the edge with it all, and this just tipped him over, throwing away something that's taken over a year to make from his elderly mother is just awful. Why would you do something like that? And it's almost making me think there's something psychologically wrong here because it just seems so extreme. I'm not trying to excuse the behavior at all, but it just seems like there's no giving it at all. Now for the part which might be controversial. And look, I'm not going to call Opie the arsehole for saying what they said. I don't think they're, a, I don't think they're particularly an arsehole, but I, I gotta ask, what did you think that saying I told you so was going to achieve? You think that she was going to turn around and go, oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen an I told you so be received well. And I'm not saying Opie's wrong because she was clearly right. That's what did happen. Opie warned them and it happened. So Opie said, I told you so. But, but I just think saying it is never going to get a good reaction. Writing says, I'm sorry, but your sister sounds like a really shitty person. Not the arsehole. I hope her ex-husband was able to get those sweaters back. Those are irreplaceable. And then there was a bunch of people below that talking about, you know, a two-year-old being in only beige and gray and only beige and gray toys and the and the basically the, the child living in a colorless world. That's like a really sad thought, isn't it? But another commenter says, as a crocheter and knitter, I would be devastated if someone threw away my work after it had been gifted. I just know that lady put so much time and effort into those sweaters. You are absolutely not the arsehole for calling her out on it. That's just a horrible thing to do. Just because she likes being a sad beige woman doesn't mean her family has to be a sad beige family. Opie said the sweaters took longer to make because Mark's mum has arthritis and used expensive yarn. 
See, Firefighter says not the arsehole. Maybe if your parents didn't support her cruel nonsense, she wouldn't be getting a divorce. Who throws away hand-knitted gifts over a BS aesthetic? The truth is long overdue. Opie says my parents don't support her aesthetic behavior, but convincing her to change is like talking to a brick wall. Right now, they're lending a shoulder to cry on because at the end of the day, she's still their daughter. But me personally, I see it as karma for pushing a boring aesthetic on us. Miniman says, here's the thing though. If you don't call someone out on bad behavior, how do they have any hope of improving? Yes, it's messed up to have to say, yeah, like I said, throwing away things will destroy your marriage. But it's absolutely a stance that has to be said because if you don't take a stance and tell them, they cannot change. Turning a blind eye to something bad is the same as permitting said thing. She's destroying her marriage and instead of using it as a tool to teach her how to behave, they're being a supportive parent, which will lead her to not change. Foxy sly old stoty fox says, Lisa, I'm sorry for saying that when I did. It was wrong of me to say it at that moment. I shouldn't have said it at that moment and I apologize unreservedly. However, from now on, now I say it all the time as, it's entirely your own fault, you daft sausage. <laughs> Not the arsehole. And the final comment from Eddie who says you're the arsehole. Telling people I told you so serves no purpose other than to make you feel superior and make them feel shittier. It's almost always the wrong thing to do and serves no good purpose. Your sister knows you told her so. Also, your sister is the arsehole for being such a psycho about colors. Almost sounds like a psychological problem that needs therapy. So OP comes in with an update and says, so yeah, I'm back. I didn't expect to be back so soon. Long story short, my sister got arrested for attacking her soon-to-be ex-husband Mark and his mother after getting served with divorce papers. After Lisa was served with divorce papers at her workplace on Friday, Lisa started drinking and crying a lot and spent the entire weekend drinking and crying and repeatedly calling Mark. Last night, she took an Uber to Mark's home and begged him to reconsider the divorce. This is the story I got from Mark. He said no, and then she started insulting him and hitting him. Then when his mum tried to push her away from Mark, my sister attacked Mark's mum. Mark called the police and now my sister is arrested with a 6K bail that none of us are paying. Mark got a bite and a scratch marks and his mum got a black eye. We'll update when more details come out. Bloody gee whiz, that escalated in two paragraphs, didn't it? Foxy sly old stoty fox was in the update as well. He said info, is your sister's prison jumpsuit brown, gray or white? And any buyer reply saying, I hope it's a very bright orange. And this all started over an aesthetic. Holy moly. What do you guys make of this situation? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below and let's move on to another story. This is from the Bad Roommate subreddit. It does come with an update as well. I saw the title and I was like, hold up, wait a minute. We got to get involved. It's from Shelly112103 and says, my roommate keeps hissing at me. This is really strange. I've known my roommate Leonardo for a few years now and we're good friends. We recently got an apartment together and things have been great. But in the past couple of days, he started hissing at me. It was kind of funny at first, but it's starting to wear on me. Whenever I say anything to him, I just get a hiss. Hey, Leo, do we have any Ziploc bags? <laughs> oh, I never thought I'd be hissing on here. Hey, do you want to play Fortnite? <laughs> I'm going to the store. Do you need anything? <laughs> it's just so strange. And it wasn't like this before. I don't know if he just feels more comfortable now that we're living together or if it's stress or something. It's really starting to piss me off and I've told him multiple times it's starting to bother me. Sorry for the rant, just wanted to vent. Any advice would be appreciated. Edit, love all the comments and they've been a good laugh, but really though, he's an actual person and I don't know what to do. We've been friends for years and I don't want to damage that. Planning on talking to him about it in the morning. And Opie is absolutely right in that edit, you know. It's a strange situation. That's probably gonna have a lot of people going, what? But at the same time, this is an actual person and you don't know what they're going through in their life and what's causing this. I kind of find it strange that it hasn't been asked already. Like the first time this dude hissed at you that you'd again, hold up, what was that? Did you just hiss at me? 
But seriously though, I think all you can do in this situation is open up to him, ask him what's going on. Is there something that he wants to talk about? If you feel comfortable doing so, of course. Otherwise, I just can't see another way this will be resolved. Raging Lilith says the only time hiss is an acceptable response is when someone opens your curtains slash blinds in the morning. Oh, absolutely. I'm like, it's more of like a vampire response for me when you see that light come through. And you're like, <sighs> Pack of Alpaca says, I would ask them a direct question they need to answer. Something based deeply in reality, like bills or something. And if they respond like that, I'd simply stare at them and ask them again. Basically ignore whatever they think they are doing and continue to ask them. If they continue to do it, simply ask them what the deal is. To try and have a conversation about bills. Basically force them into reality. Another commenter says your cat, <clears throat> I mean roommate, might just feel stressed out with a recent environment change. One of my roommates wailed for like eight days straight until she realized it's okay. This is where we live now. And one more comment which says establish dominance. Bark at him. So OP did eventually confront their roommate in the update. They said, following up on my post from a couple of days ago, I sat down with my roommate yesterday morning, asked him why he keeps hissing at me and, and told him that it's really annoying. I told him that if he keeps up the hissing, this isn't going to work out. He pretty much just ignored me. So I said, if there was anything he needed to talk about, I'm here. And that if I had done something to upset him, he needed to let me know so he could take care of it. He got up, went into his room and shut the door. I needed to get ready for work and was tired of dealing with him, so I left him alone. When I got home from work, all of his things were gone, and he was nowhere to be found. I called him and it went straight to voicemail, but he had changed his voicemail to a recording of, of himself hissing. So I don't know. Yes, he wanted to give me one last fuck you. Pretty pissed about it and I've got no way of getting a hold of him, because he won't answer his phone. And no one else has heard from him or can get a hold of him. Been a weird couple of days, but I guess I have better things to worry about than him. Like how to pay rent now that he ditched me. What a weird asshole. Regret ever moving in with him. Someone commented and asking the guy's age and did they contact the parents. Opie said he's 20, 21 in a couple of months. I did text his parents about it, but I don't think they ever liked me much, so I doubt there'd be any help. A commenter on the back of that one said that around the sort of this age, schizophrenia can start to show itself. So reach out to the parents and let them know if this is outside his normal kind of behavior. I myself found this one both strange and concerning at the end there. And I think, you know, it would be a good idea. I know OP stuck with the financials of it and, you know, that's really shitty. And I hope that gets resolved at the same time. But I hope he also sends a message to the parents saying about what happened because, you know, it's just, it's out there, isn't it? There's a chance it might just be being a bit out there. There's a chance it could be something mentally related at the same time. So, but what do you guys make of this situation? Have you ever had yourself a bad roommate? How did you deal with it? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story. For our next story, we've got a bit of neighbor related drama from a deleted user from the am i the arsehole subreddit and says am i the arsehole for telling my neighbor no the house across from me sold recently the prior owners built it and lived in it for almost 50 years they were lovely people and they are missed i didn't meet the new neighbors until recently they're living there intermittently while renovations are being done Anyway, we both live on a very busy double yellow line street and while street parking isn't illegal per se, it's definitely dangerous as it is a busy, relatively narrow, high traffic road. The neighbor's house has a smallish driveway that can fit maybe six cars and with a setup of the yard, there is really no lawn parking. I, on the other hand, have a very large circular driveway that can probably fit 15 to 20 cars if needed but there is only one entrance and exit point to the street. So I was out getting my mail the other day and the neighbor was outside. She came over, introduced herself and we chatted briefly. Then she said, may I ask a favor of you? I laughed and said, well, you can ask. Anyway, long story shorter, she said they were having a house party the weekend after 4th of July. They're expecting a large number of people and hoping they could use my driveway for parking as street parking is difficult. I said, sorry, no, it will block me in. I'm fine with your guests parking on the grass in front of my fence. 
have a small fence about eight feet from the street and there is a grass strip in front of it. The Smiths, prior house owners, would often use it if they were hosting a large group. She said, oh, I appreciate that, but that will only fit about six cars. We're going to need parking for another 10 to 12 beyond what fits in my driveway. I again said, I'm sorry, I can't offer you your use of my driveway without it being a significant inconvenience to us. I'm going to have to say no. She then says, well, my guests can park along the side and back of your driveway so you can still get in and out. I said again, I'm going to have to say no. I'm not comfortable with your guests on my property and the only light I have at night is my post light out front. It's very dark at night and I wouldn't want anyone to trip or get hurt. She started to look frustrated and said, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't think they can all park on the street. I said, yes, I know parking can be frustrating here. There are a couple of municipal buildings nearby. It might be worth calling the town to see if you can use their parking lots since it's a weekend and maybe shuttle people or have them walk. Other than that, I'm not sure. It's one of the downsides of living on a busy street. I then excused myself and went back inside. Now, every time I see her, she just kind of gives me a dirty look and says nothing. I don't really care about my neighbor not being neighborly as we prefer to keep to ourselves anyway. But am I the asshole for not letting her use my driveway for parking? Edit, since many of you have asked, no, she did not invite me to a party. <laughs> Second edit, a lot of people are amazed by the large driveways. I live in a former farm town that is now a suburb in the US. Houses are on one to three acre lots, usually in the middle. So they all have long driveways to access the house. This is very, very common in my area and nothing special. Absolutely not the arsehole in this situation. I think that he was kind enough to give her some space out the front, which was more than you needed to do. Her standing there and getting frustrated, giving it the old, I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, maybe you shouldn't have assumed in the first place. The entitlement there is just shit. You know, that's for you to figure out. You're having this party with freaking 20 cars. And Opie gave some solid reasons why I don't want people to park on their drive. And I couldn't work out, was this for the whole weekend? Because I'm assuming some of those drivers might be having some drinks. I don't know, maybe not. Or they could just get bloody taxis anyway. Wombat Bean says, not the asshole. Be prepared to call a tow truck though. Should she decide to just not take no for an answer? Opie said, I talked to my husband about it and we think it's best to just leave our own car at the entrance slash exit point so that no one can get in. If someone still decides to park in front of the driveway anyway, a call to the police will sort that quickly. Small town, cops actually respond. Competitive cod <laughs> says, not the arsehole. I understand that she is disappointed, but she does not have a right. You are very generous in allowing her guests parking on the outside of the fence, but you've already said that you don't have a lot of light outside. So what happens if one of them trips and gets really hurt? That's your property insurance, not theirs. She can't guarantee what a guest will or will not do. Even if you said yes, she can't guarantee that we'll park in the exact designated spots and not cause any problems. No is a complete sentence. The shuttle idea is the winner. Opie says, the other thing that made me hesitate is that I don't know these people, don't know their friends, and don't know if there will be alcohol or other substances at their party. I don't want to be involved with any of it in any way, especially if people are getting their cars under some kind of influence. Omi Lizard said you did the smartest thing because if someone hurts themselves on your property, it is a mess. If someone decides to get drunk and damage your property, it will be a mess. I would have said no and not given a huge explanation. I don't know folks well enough to offer too much info. Maybe if I knew them well, I'd give some more context, but sounds like you're not very close with the new neighbors. But also be careful as they might still have folks parking on your property. So maybe plan ahead. I have a neighbor who every year puts up a large do not park signs as his property shares the street side for firework views. He's wise to do that to get ahead of the mess that is the folks trashing his yard and parking over his plants or blocking his driveway. Plan ahead. Opie says, yeah, I'm likely going to park my crappy little Honda at the entrance and exit point that day so no one can even get in. If someone parked in front of it, I'll call the police. It's a small town and the cops usually respond quickly. I have the same issue around where I live on fireworks night. There's a big display at the local football club. 
and there's an area which overlooks the football club. So some people go up on this area and they watch the show for free. But the amount of cars that come from all different areas, it just, it gets rammed around here and people are chucking their cars everywhere, parking in people's drives, across people's drives, up on the grass, it gets absolutely chaotic. I mean, sometimes it's quite fun to watch. <laughs> but what do you guys make of this situation? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. Now, just a huge thank you for being here today, getting involved in the stories, your love, your support, your time, and sending me your pictures over on Twitter of your hobbies. Had Lindsay send me a picture of a diamond art that she was doing yesterday while listening. Thank you so much for sharing, Lindsay. And don't forget to share your images too of what you're doing while you're listening. Don't forget there'll be a couple of playlists at the very end that you can click on and it will automatically scroll through all the videos for you whilst you're doing your hobbies, driving, working, whatever you're up to. Thank you so much and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Take care and much love. I can smell the smoke from the bacon. Yum, yum, yum. Let's go. See the sun shining from the windows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I know that today will be a good day. Okay. I know that today will be a good day. Yeah, yeah. A, B, C. One, two, three. Drink some water. Brush my teeth. Get out of bed and I stretch. Bed in my hair is a 